Good morning. Mark Carbone coming to you from Banff. Hi, I'm Allison Bullock, DLST and EdTech Learner from Ontario, Canada. Well, thanks so much for taking time to uh, capture this conversation, Allison. So perhaps we could start with you sharing just a little bit about how you came across HyperDocs and um, and share a little bit how you got started on your own learning journey. Sure. Oddly enough, I came across HyperDocs by accident on Twitter. Was intrigued by the idea of what it might be, and discovered that there was indeed a boot camp running through EdTech. Uh, EdTech teams and Google online in the next five days so I jumped on and joined and discovered the amazing world of creativity, critical thinking and learning opportunities that are within HyperDocs themselves. Well just hearing your quick overview it sounds like an intriguing topic so um, tell us a little bit about about the learnings from taking this course. I was fascinated and really excited by the opportunities for teacher creativity. It's not only it's a way to branch out from traditional worksheets which most people are getting away from but the infinite combinations of robust media integration, paths and multiple choice, independent learning, symbols, pictures, metaphors that are suspended through imagery or through sound that all enhance learning both for students who maybe have some needs around being reinforced with imagery and students who want to break from traditional offerings. It was really quite exciting to me. Listening to your description, it sounds uh, to me that there's plenty of opportunity for um, allowing for differentiation both in terms of learning styles, learning needs, perhaps um, students might gravitate towards a method that's more in their learning strength is that what you see from your coursework? Absolutely, absolutely. And I found that the fact that student teachers could integrate the, the learning styles and different activities and allow for content creation with tools of a student's choice made the learning more engaging and more enticing for people to choose the vein or the medium that they found was best representative of their skills and their, their learning. So if I'm a, a student, say, in a classroom setting, I'm using a thoughtfully created HyperDoc, I might have a mix of text, web resources, uh, video content resources, perhaps audio, podcast kinds of resources. And so I would have essentially differentiated choice and yet within somewhat of a framework created by the teacher. Is that a that's good exact, way to think about it? Exact representation of how it is. A, a hyperdoc itself is a landing spot for all of these almost tangential ideas around a learning concept but it's a great map for students to come back to mm -hmm. if they complete something come back try this one explore this video create a video to show me what you know fill out this Google form to let me assess what you know so far so it's not only a great place for students to come and go from but the teachers can check in and see with guideposts along the way through regular assessments if the learning is happening and where there are any holes that can be quickly addressed. And I could only imagine then within the context of a hyperdoc it would be easy to create um, places where students could populate links to uh, some of the ways that they've documented their learning. Yes, indeed. Okay, great. Now. I know that you recently actually shared your learnings and were helping other um, teachers learn about HyperDocs. How did they re respond to um, this as a course option? I found the initial reaction was confusion and it seemed overwhelming because of the volume of tools and the robust activities. It's, it's not a linear tr um, path by any means, but once teachers realized they had the freedom to be creative and expand and put a diverse range of activities into their learning to engage kids. They were really excited. The course was a great success and I'm still in touch with a number of teachers now who are asking thoughtful questions about how to improve and how to adapt it for various learning levels and to integrate thoughtfully selected technologies. Well thanks so much for sharing it as just maybe one final uh uh, comment on my part is I'm I'm listening to all the advantages to using this. Um, one can't help but think about learning models for uh, teacher professional learning and and using it in other contexts besides uh, in a classroom with with young students. 
I did experience through my course connecting with tech coaches who are using the HyperDocs model to teach PD and to teach tech PD in that independent vein so those who were more advanced could go to levels that they were at their level and others could go to the more beginner and swap and trade. I mean, people, I always find when I go into various levels of learning, I'll always pick up a tip from something every time. You always have one takeaway, but you can spend more time in the areas you don't know, but it's all still under the umbrella of the goal that the PD is trying to achieve. The, the biggest, one thing I forgot to mention is really key. The HyperDocs model forces teachers to become better teachers. You have to be a meticulous organizer and planner, and if you're not, this is a great way, and a creative, interesting way, to get better at organizing. This task needs to go to here, and I need to assess that, and by the time this one's done, they will have learned X, Y, and Z. I, I can't see it having any disadvantages to pedagogical practice and to professional growth. Well, thank you so much for taking time to uh, share your thinking on HyperDocs, and thank you so much for flying out to Banff to do this interview. <laughs> My pleasure. Thanks, Mark.